John Deere has been manufacturing some of the most brilliant tractors since 1912. If you're wondering how these competent tractor designs have changed over the years, here's a breakdown of the evolution of John Deere tractors since the past century. First, the original challenge. The history of John Deere tractors is a complicated one. It all started in 1912 when the company faced a huge challenge. Even though it was highly successful in producing implements and was also the number one manufacturer of plows in the world, it lacked a tractor to complete its product lineup at the time. Naturally, the company was facing immense pressure from dealers to include a tractor in that equipment line. And another major problem was that all of Deere's major competitors offered tractors. So if Deere wanted to hold on to their plow business, they'd have to get a tractor. This is why the Deere board of directors succumbed to this external pressure and agreed in March 1912 to develop a tractor. And in the next couple of years, Deere engineer C.H. Melvin worked tirelessly to develop a three-wheeled tractor plow. But even though his ideas were fancy, they failed to gain traction. This is when Joseph Dane stepped in. He was a board member who had sold his company, Dane Manufacturing, to Deere in 1910. A member of the board of directors and an innovative tinkerer, Dane convinced all important people in the company that he had a concept for a tractor that would put the company at the forefront of the modern tractor's design. Next, what happened after Dane got permission? After getting the go-ahead from the board of directors, Dane and his engineering team spent the next four years working on a three-wheel design based on state-of-the-art engineering and technology. And soon enough, Dane's effort bore fruit. This took place on November 19, 1917, when Deere's board voted to manufacture 100 tractors of the Dane type for sale. The Dane type caused quite a stir in the farming machinery world and would be later labeled the all-wheel drive. And with this particular tractor manufacturer, Deere entered the highly competitive tractor market. This new tractor boasted an all-wheel drive, which was a fairly new option at that time. This also made the tractor more fuel efficient than other tractors at this time. Not only this, but the tractor also had a friction drive transmission. This allowed users to shift from low to high speed while the tractor was moving. If you thought that was all, you'll be surprised to know that Dane also added a high speed four cylinder engine to the tractor. There were other four cylinder engines in use on tractors at this time, but the all wheel drives power plant featured some advanced options such as forced lubrication. Too pricey for the 20th century, even though Dane's new tractor was highly styled, it was a little too pricey for tractor consumers at the time. This is probably because of their new and improved tractor designs that started the trend of modeling tractors after automobiles. But since the all-wheel drive had an Achilles heel at its price, farmers who were used to horses and mules found the $1,200 tractor tad bit overpriced. Also, during its introduction, the economy was suffering a recession and people weren't exactly willing to spend their life savings on a tractor during a recession. As a result of this, only 90 all-wheel drives built were sold at the time. Introducing the Waterloo Boy. After the Deere management swept the all-wheel drive under a rug, they decided to come up with something else. The firm had spent six years and around $250,000 developing the all-wheel drive. The sales had disappointed them. They still needed a tractor that would sell. The only solution to the problem was found in the Waterloo Gasoline Engine Company, which had put up for sale at the time. So Deere's board purchased the company, and because of this, they also acquired the Waterloo Boy tractor in March 1918. At the time, the Waterloo Boy was a simple and cheap tractor to build, and that's exactly what the company needed. Deere discovered that they could end up selling the machines for about $700, which was almost half the price of the original all-wheel drive. Another great advantage of the Waterloo Boy was that its purchase also came with a manufacturing plant in Waterloo, Iowa, which was ready to churn out tons of tractors. The glorious Waterloo Boy years. For the next six years, John Deere decided to aggressively market the Waterloo Boy. During this time, Deere introduced more than a dozen variations of the tractor, refining its design and increasing its engine size to as much as 465 cubic inches. And what helped them so well was a thriving farm economy, which helped firmly establish the company in the tractor market. But the Waterloo Boy had one nemesis, the Henry Ford's assembly tractor, which was called the Fordson. You might not believe this, but Ford was selling the Fordson for less than $400 at the time, which made it a formidable competitor. Fordson's compact design also appealed to tractor buyers, which meant that the Deere management was doing something wrong with their manufacturers. This is when they decided to initiate a tractor revamp. They did this using prototype plans obtained after the acquisition of the Waterloo Boy. Deere engineers came up with a tractor that 
that was not only compact, but also more powerful than their previous designs. It sounds crazy, but the new versions were capable of pulling a three bottom plow and also included a rugged two cylinder engine that could burn any kind of low cost distillate fuel. Safe to say that the company was impressed with its engineers efforts and the deer board ended up approving the manufacturing of the new Model D, which hit the market in 1924. And for the next 29 years, deer dealers sold more than 161,000 Model Ds. This was an instrumental move because it helped establish the company as a market contender and also inspired a new kind of tractor culture. In addition to Model D, 1928, Deere had already launched an addition to the D. This new model was a general purpose tractor called the Model GP, and it featured some cool new movies like a power takeoff and a power lift system to raise implements such as planters and cultivators. People love the idea of this new tractor, and a narrow front version of the GP came on the market the very next year. You might not believe it, but that tractor was the basis for all-purpose tractor that would change the world of tractors and also become the best-selling deer of all time, the glorious Model A and its variants. Model A came in 1934 and was introduced to its dealers as a tractor that was as modern as anything on the market at the time. It offered high crop clearance and had an innovative one-piece transmission that made life a lot easier for farmers. What made it extra special was that its previous mechanical lift system was replaced with a new and improvised hydraulic hydraulic design. The A also offered adjustable rear wheel tread, which allowed it to be custom fitted to any crop row spacing in farms. As you might have expected, the growing popularity of the A led to the invention of several variations. This includes Orchard, AO, Narrow Front Axle, AN, Wide Front End, AW, and High Crop versions of the N and W. Just two years later, Deere introduced an even smaller version of the Model A, which was better suited for small farmers. This track was known as the Model B, had all the advances offered by its big brother while being smaller and easier to manage. Both models were extremely popular, and when both finally retired, over 620,000 versions of each model had been sold, making them some of the most popular tractor models in the entire industry for a good number of decades. Safe to say that the Deere engineers were spurred on by this sales success, which is why they continued to innovate two-cylinder designs for their consumers. Model G came next in 1938, followed by the H, M, and finally Model R came out in 1949. Deere also added the Lith Model L in 1937 just to give the consumers a little treat. A glorious history full of updates. Deere has updated its tractor line seamlessly with its numbered series which started in 1952. The models included 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80 packed engines and transmissions that were extremely refined. Other developed features also included included a power steering and three-point hitch. Another round of improvements came along in 1956 when Deere launched its 20 series with the 320, 420, 520, 720, and 820. Two years later, this line was improved and upgraded to the 30 series. But even though Deere was making a ton of improvements, they continued their use of the two cylinders. This presented a bit of a problem since farmers wanted more responsive and powerful engines. So the company's engineers decided that the only solution was to draw off the two-cylinder design for a four-cylinder platform. This was a great decision because it inspired a new generation of tractors that came out of advanced engineering efforts. These new models included four-cylinder gas and diesel engine designs which worked as efficiently as farmers wanted them to. Deere ended up transforming tractor history in a century. What do you think? Is John Deere a pioneer in farming machinery tech or are there any other worthy tractor designers and manufacturers you can think of? Let us know in the comments below be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.